you are looking at a remarkable idea. An idea that has intrigued and attracted and literally thrilled thousands upon thousands of men, women, and children. And you, my friends, are about to witness this idea become a reality. For this is the story of the miracle sea in the desert, the Salton Sea. And here, another touch of nature's magic. Here in the desert, a sea called Salton Sea. Landlocked, rich in beauty and allure, the new recreational capital of the world, attracting tremendous numbers of water skiers and boaters. The Salton Sea. What's up, everyone? I'm out here today at the Salton Sea. This was once one of the most popular resorts in all of California. Uh, one of the most popular resorts in all of the U.S. And now it's mostly abandoned. We're here to find out why. What happened here? Let's go see. California's largest lake shouldn't even exist. It was created in 1905 when flooding from the Colorado River breached a levee and flooded the area. After the Salton Sea was created, this brought many farm settlers. In the 1950s, it was one of the largest resorts for America's elite and celebrities. Frank Sinatra, the Beach Boys, Bing Crosby, the Marx Brothers. They all used to come here and enjoy California's largest lake. But today, it's a shell of its former self. I'm going to explore the Salton Sea and show you what was once California's second most popular resort destination. We're at Bombay Beach, which was once a resort here in Salton Sea, visited by the likes of Dwight Eisenhower, Frank Sinatra. But after rising salinity levels in the lake in the 70s, it's become mostly abandoned now and with a lot of buildings that are falling apart and it's really interesting. So let's go check it out. Bombay Beach was founded in the 1920s, but by the 50s and 60s, it was a very popular vacation spot. This near ghost town once had a thriving business district, a yacht club, and even a golf course. Earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters led to the decline of this town. A flood in 1976 was the final nail in the coffin for Bombay Beach. It caused extensive damage to the town's infrastructure. So I'm here at the ruins, just checking them out. Honestly, this place is kind of weird. It's mostly just pigeons everywhere, and like me, I haven't seen anybody else here. Um, but anyways, look at this. It's kind of interesting. Not sure what to make of that, but I like it. Let's keep going. This house is particularly colorful. Many of these abandoned buildings date back to Bombay Beach's heyday in the 1950s and 60s. Most of these structures were for affluent visitors and Hollywood celebrities who would come to the area. The town of Bombay Beach has a population of about 225. I think it used to be, definitely used to be way more. Let's go check out this other one. I walked through this one a minute ago and it was like a thousand pigeons flew out into my face right when I walked in. So, let's see if that happens again. There's a violent pigeon fight going on. Okay. All of the abandoned buildings at Bombay Beach are covered in graffiti and different art installations. Walking through them alone with no one around was an eerie experience. There are a bunch of ruins by the sea as well, so let's go check out those. Similar to the abandoned homes, the ruins on the beach were turned into art installations as well. I was told that the sea didn't smell good, and um, yeah, that's factual. It smells like rotting whale carcass mixed with wet dog. I discovered a bar here, but the only thing is the kegs or the taps don't work. And instead, they just have a warm bottle of Fresca and Powerade Zero. Slab City is known as an off-grid community right next to the Salton Sea. It's located on a former World War II Marine base. 
It's home to about 150 to 200 full-time residents. The slab in Slab City is referring to the concrete bases that remain from the former marine base. It has a blend of off-grid living, counterculture, and art. But the community does not have running water or electricity. One of the most famous attractions in Slab City is Salvation Mountain. It's a 50-foot high monument to God created by artist Leonard Knight. He began building it in the mid-1980s and worked on it until his death in 2014. Also in Slab City is East Jesus, which is a famous experimental art exhibit. It was started by a man named Charlie Russell. Russell and his friends wanted to create a community where artists could come together and experiment with new ideas. I'm really feeling a connection to this guy. Slab City is full of different art installations and artists. I was lucky enough to talk to someone who lived there and get the opportunity to explore her art exhibit. So what do you think is something that people don't understand about Slab City or they should know? Slab City's got a real like reputation of lawlessness and um, yes, in a way, it is kind of a lawless community in the fact that people are not inclined to call the police on the mm -hmm. neighbors. You know, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. don't ask, don't tell, don't ask any questions, don't share any information. Most of the people that live out here are not fond of the police department. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, that, that it's such, that there's so much more here than that, that the, the, mis, the misrepresentation of it, that there is a lot more people here that are creative and artists, whether they're musicians or this is their first attempt at creation. Like yeah. a lot of people are stifled and they'll be like, I'm not an artist. Well, I mean, everyone has creativity inside of them. You just have to figure out what your creativity mm -hmm. is. I just wanted to do something a little bit more than just live here. These objects will all come together and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is like a whole story. That's the fun thing about art mm -hmm. is that I don't have to tell you what the story is. You have to figure out a story. If you decide to visit Slab City, make sure to check out House of Dots located right next to East Jesus. So, I had gone to a third location named Sultan City, but while I was there, a giant dust storm rolled into the area, which had me wondering what the future of the Sultan Sea holds. So, I'm out here right now. It is so windy. It's insane, but behind me are all these completely abandoned trees from what I'm assuming used to be a very lovely area to hang out by the beach. And that's about all I got there because I didn't want to inhale the dust. In fact, the sea has been losing water for decades. As the lake dries up, the concentration of chemicals and salt in the water is getting in the air. This is also causing a mass die-off of endangered birds and fish. In fact, the Salton Sea is one of the most important places for birds in North America during their migration process from Alaska to South America. The drying lake bed, which is covered in salty, toxic water, is becoming a serious health concern for nearby residents. As the sea dries up and more shoreline is exposed, the strong winds in the area are picking up the dust and blowing it into nearby communities, where near 650,000 people live. The citizens report of headaches, nosebleeds, asthma, and other health problems. Unless water is pumped into the Salton Sea, these issues are only going to get worse. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed today's video. The sun is setting here in the Salton Sea. I'm gonna go enjoy it and check it out, but I hope you enjoyed all the stuff we saw. And honestly, it was really fun here. Like, it gets a bad rap, but definitely come check this place out. It has a lot more to offer than you think. I think it's important to check out places that are often represented as being ugly or sort of downtrodden. Like, go find out for yourself, because that's not always the case. But anyways, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and yeah, let's see where we go next.